Hey you and welcome. I'm Mr. Barry. In this whole video, I want to talk about the update to Google Maps. Uh, basically, makes it easy to find uh, routes and pathways which are more fuel efficient and better for EVs. And uh, according to many of the comments in the past here or recently, people want to see Ushi more. So here's Ushi. I'm going to give her a little beef snack there. And uh, hey, if you like Ushi, you like the videos and all that, make sure you do click on thumbs up, share the videos as that really helps the channel there. So there's Ushi and her little snacks. And by the way, Ushi is a Japanese word that means cow. And so if you look at Ushi, she looks a little bit like a cow with that with these spots, these white and uh, white coat with black spots. And uh, alrighty, so. Let's learn more about these uh, changes and well, how we can actually use Google Maps to find uh, energy efficient ways from one place to another. Hey, and here we see the screen of my cell phone up there. Now, in order to get this, all you have to do is make sure that you do have the latest updates on your phone, which should be automatic. All right, so you start your Google Maps app, and right when you're inside the application, you'll see this screen here. If you notice you have your little avatar up there at the top, go ahead and click on that or tap it with your finger, and then it comes up and it will say your name and your email address at the top and then what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way down and click on settings so go ahead and tap settings from settings you get this window open up and then from this window what we're going to do is click on electric vehicle settings which if you scroll down you'll be right after maps history and right when you click on uh, electric vehicle settings you get to this screen here and now notice this is your plugs. Well, you see not every EV uses the same plug. So uh, let's look at some of these plugs now. So click on or tap add plugs. There we go. And I'm going to describe some of these plugs that we have there. The very first one is J1772. And that is a standard plug. Um, even Tesla's can, uh, with an adapter, plug into the J1772 plug. Um, those are usually the free chargers that you see in front of supermarkets or um, in many other locations there. And uh, so J1772 is compatible to every EV uh, out there, which is kind of nice. Whether you have a Nissan Leaf, Mitsubishi iMeV, or any of the, the newer cars there, you will be able to plug into the J1772 plug. The next ones that we see there are the CCS and that is for like if you have a Mustang Mach-E you also have the CCS. Now what a lot of people don't know is that the CCS if you look at it closely it's the exact same plug as the J1772 except you have that little bar at the bottom and that's the same is true for the CCS uh, combo 2 that you see down there on the list. So if you have a Mustang Mach-E or any of the newer GM products out there such as the Chevy Equinox, the Hummer EV and, and all the others. Uh, guess what? It's going to be coming with a CCS so you choose that one. The, the, what's nice about the CCS it is a quick charge so it's a fast charging um, over a thousand miles per hour charge rate on the highest level. Now will your car actually you know do that? Will actually consume or allow it to be recharged at that higher rate? Well, that's the question because uh, many of the EVs out there, um, <clears throat> even though they may connect to the CCS uh, port there, they won't take advantage of that full speed, maybe um, maybe half of that speed or so on many of the new cars, unless you're talking about the Porsche Taycan, which actually can take the full advantage of CCS. 
Type 2, as you see there, is kind of a unique standard. It's for some of the older uh, EVs. I haven't really seen it on any of the newer ones. When I go out and see the, the Kona or the Ionic EVs, they're all CCS. So the Type 2 is kind of a, um, not really used in any of the today's EVs. Let's go all the way down to Chatamo. Now, Chatamo, what's really nice is you can use Chatamo with a Chatamo adapter. So even if your car takes Tesla or one of these others, you can actually buy a Chatamo adapter for not too much. And the Chatamo adapter or the Chatamo plug, as you see there, is actually used for Nissan and Mitsubishi. So if your vehicle is a Japanese made vehicle such as Nissan or Mitsubishi, then guess what? It's Chatamo as well as another plug next to it is J1772. Next below that we see Tesla. And what's nice about Tesla is it is a fast DC charger, uh, just as fast as the CCS with the newer versions, versions 4. Uh, there you actually see it as fast as the fastest CCS um, chargers, which is kind of nice. Also, with adapters, we now have adapters in uh, North America so that you can plug a Tesla into CCS or the J1772 or even the Chatamo. So, hey, <laughs> that's kind of nice. Uh, so when you get your Tesla, you can actually connect into any of these that you see here, uh, minus the, the, uh, the Type 2, which, I, like I said, I don't really see the Type 2 really in North America. Next, we have the generic wall outlet. Now, the wall outlet can be a uh, like a, a NEMA 1450, which is a uh, 240 volt AC, but it also can be a 120 volt AC, such as at a at many places. That's really slow uh, charging. <laughs> so, um, if if that's if you have the uh, plug for that, which I think every car comes with those adapters, the plug another. You can add those as well. Basically, when you choose the plug, it's kind of nice because you can actually uh, use Google Maps to find EV charging stations with those plugs. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to click on some of these. As you see here, I, pl I clicked on the J1772, Chatamo, and Tesla because those are the ones I use most with my Tesla. Next, uh, after that, we click on OK or the check mark and notice it comes up to this window just to kind of confirm that hey your plugs are those and we're going to click on that little arrow to get back to the main settings here and now what we're going to do is we're going to go down and go all the way down to navigation settings all right now once you're into navigation settings you'll notice that it comes up to this window here and we have root options. Now these are either on or off. So you can have avoid highways, avoid uh, tolls, uh, avoid ferries. You can avoid those or not. And then right below that is prefer fuel efficient routes. Now this is kind of true whether you're having a gas powered car, a diesel, a hybrid, or an EV. Now um, on that what we're going to do is we're going to turn that on and notice it says maps will suggest fuel efficient routes by default when arrival times are similar which is kind of nice and one thing too is it will show that route with a leaf on it so there will actually be a little you'll see a little leaf there next to the time to show you hey this is a, a, a fuel efficient route while we're talking about fuel efficiency if you ever owned a gas car you probably notice that if you're driving through stop and go traffic, your fuel economy goes down. It's not a very good efficient engine there to stop and then go and then stop and then go. That's not true for EVs. In fact, the opposite is true for EVs. So let's say that you're going through stop and go traffic. Every time you're slowing down or putting on the brake, instead of the energy just dissipating in heat on your brake calibers and on your pads there, what's actually happening is the energy is going back from kinetic energy back into electrical energy and recharging your batteries. Tesla's, by the way, this is automatic. 
as well as any of the newer vehicles there, the, the Nissan Leaf, the Mitsubishi iMev, the uh, Hyundai uh, Kona and all the others there. Those are all equipped with um, the type of system that basically recoups the energy every time you brake, which is really nice. So this is kind of a standard feature in, in EVs for the last, we're going to say, uh, seven years or so, which is kind of nice because regenerative braking is a good thing. Every time you slow down or brake, boom, that energy goes back to your battery system. And that's why we're choosing and turning that option on there. There we go, I just turned it on. Notice that I've turned on prefer few efficient routes. Next is the toll price. And if you are living in a community such as on the East Coast that have a lot of toll passes there, then it's kind of nice to have that turned on. Uh, that way when you're traveling you know exactly how much it's going to cost to get onto certain roads which is kind of nice all right so let's work this out here and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to um, type in some destinations there so one thing here is kind of nice if you just type in tesla supercharger boom it shows all the supercharging stations which are tesla in your immediate area which is kind of nice and next one I'm going to do is I'm going to type in just electric vehicle charging stations. And you notice as you're typing in electric vehicle, it'll type, it'll put in the rest of the, the, uh, the text there for you. So notice here, these are EV stations, which are not particularly Tesla. They may be CCS, J1772, or even Chatamo. And um, it will filter the stations according to your plugs which is really really nice and so here we have a little map of my immediate area showing all the, all of the, the stations there you notice there's one of them with that has a heart you can add stations to your favorites simply by clicking or tapping on the station or holding your finger on it you'll see the option to add to favorites add to your favorites and then boom that's one of your favorite stations maybe it's a station that's near your home like down the street right so um, anyway so you can see here's EV uh, go charging stations as well as others such as charge point in fact there's over 20 different station types or um, um, companies that have EV stations and you're seeing them there when you do that it just brings them all up just to let you know if you're new to EVs um, each of these stations require a, a payment of some kind unless it's a free station if you're using plug share which I have videos on that there's the link above me there if you're using plug share you can actually add a filter to the search which only shows up or shows the free stations believe it or not but many of the stations that you're looking at here are absolutely free and um, why is that well when people put up an EV station in front of their store some say well hey just we'll allow it to be free just plug in and there you go uh, the thing is they're not the quickest stations so the stations which are free are normally a little bit slower or maybe like one-fifth the speed of stations that you'd pay for so plug share allows you to filter that in and allow you to find the free stations or find the stations that require a payment for example if we were looking at let me go back to tesla super stations or supercharging stations here we are back to that um, those stations require a payment but you don't need to show your credit card every time you simply drive up with your tesla plug in and it charges the car automatically there on your main screen in your car you actually will see how much uh, kilowatts is being poured in or how much it's charging your car and also the cost per kilowatt as well as the the overall cost for that session you'll see that instantly on the car or on the screen there and uh, so you don't have to worry about you know Char, you know being paid or paying too much I should say all right but anyway as you can see there are many many different Tesla supercharging stations as well as just generic electric vehicle uh, charging stations 
for uh, any area that you may look into there. All right, so let's plan a little uh, trip here. And let's say it's from my place there in California, there in Fresno. And I want to go all the way down to a charge point station down in LA. And this shows it's 224 miles. Now, the nice thing is uh, for my Tesla, my range is 350 miles. So I'd expect to still have many, many miles there, over, over 120 miles of excess range or st still in my battery tank, right? When I finally get there, if you're driving a Chevy Bolt, their ranges depend on, depending on what year it is, it can be anywhere from 250 miles up to 280 miles for the brand new uh, Chevy Bolts and all that. By the way, charge point is what you'd be using with a Chevy Bolt with a CCS uh, charge. Okay, so you'd start up there and you'd go down all the way down to LA and it would guide you there. Now you could turn on or off voice. You can also send it to your device. You can actually send it to your car or to your another device there that you have in the car. Uh, depending on what you have there, could, it could be your Tesla because with the Tesla you can actually now log into your Google account and use Google Maps right on your screen. A lot of people don't know that. Um, the same is true with uh, PlugShare and as well as a better route planner. All three of those are, are excellent ways for finding uh, paths or, or tr making a trip, planning a trip. If you're buying an EV or you already own an EV and you just say, hey, how do you use all this technology? Remember, this is found on your phone. It's Google Maps. Next is the PlugShare, which is actually a little bit better. And again, I have the, the link to PlugShare. You say, well, how is PlugShare better? What's the difference? Well, the difference is when you're using PlugShare, you can filter out free charging stations versus paid charging stations. You can actually click on a charging station and see images of that charging station and see reviews, uh, active reviews of that station. So there you go. Now you know how to use the Google Maps there. There's options to include EVs. There's EV options there or even just to change it to the most fuel efficient options there. Notice that in there you can also uh, choose what kind of car you have, whether it's a gas powered car or a, a hybrid or even an EV. That option is there in that as well. Now if you're not seeing these options, Maybe you have an iPhone and you just haven't received the update. Well, the update should be out any day now for most Android users. Guess what? It's already there and working for you. Hey, if you like these types of videos, please click on thumbs up, share the video as that really helps the channel greatly. And if you have a comment or let's say you have an idea for the videos that you want to see, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. Um, I do read all I do read all of your comments and I really enjoy those very much so. Alrighty, uh, thank you again and you all have a very good day. Bye bye.